Hey guys, Legion here and welcome back to a new Jurassic World Evolution 2 speed build. Today we're going to be building for the third species from the Cretaceous Predator pack, that being the Gigantoraptor. Currently you can see me planning out the layout for the whole exhibit. Uh, basically in this exhibit we're going to be building an indoor area for the uh, Gigantoraptor. I'm going to be using the monorail arches as a monorail roof. Uh, th that's a technique that you've probably seen before and uh, maybe done by, li by like Evolution Square. And we're building that area and then we're also going to be building a bigger outside exhibit. Uh, so the Gigantoraptors basically have two different kinds of exhibits um, and one of them I'm going to also uh, build like a temperate more, uh, more temperate biome. I'm going to use uh, the temperate trees in there and on the outside I'm going to use the alpine trees from the alpine biome that we are building in today. I cut out most of the time uh, placing the monorail roof because that took quite a long time. It took like 12 minutes or something. Uh, it was quite a lengthy process. Uh, but I think the most satisfying thing was definitely deleting all of these uh, little extra bits at the end uh, that you need to be able to place the monorail as close as possible to one another. But yeah, I definitely think that it's worth it in the end result. It really makes for a super unique exhibit. But uh, if you if you want to do this um, also in your parks, I would just I just I just want to tell you that it really takes a long time. It takes like ten minutes to build like uh, a monorail roof of this size. Uh, but yeah, in my opinion, it's worth it. But what I'm doing right now is another really crucial step to achieving the look of this entire exhibit and that is uh, to get rid of all of the pillars that are now constructed inside of the exhibit because of course you want the oviraptors, uh, not the oviraptors, the gigantoraptors to be able to move freely in their exhibits. Uh, I personally don't like uh, the look of the pillars inside of the exhibit, just uh, on the outside, uh, but if you want to build something like this you can also go for the look of having like a uh, little separated structures or like walls uh, inside the exhibit as well. But for the look of this exhibit I personally decided uh, to remove all of the pillars and what I did for that was to build a layer of uh, bushes, of the big fluffy bushes around the edges of the concrete uh, wall and then I also put some other rocks around that. I always think that looks pretty cool. So if you basically want to cover up your concrete uh, fences and turn that into more sort of a natural looking background for your exhibits, I always like using that method. I've done that in many exhibits now and I think it looks always great. But if I would have just placed rocks in the entire exhibits to get rid of all of the walls, it would have looked very weird and very unnatural. So another trick I used uh, was one of the plants from the Malta DLC. Because in that DLC you actually get a really, really small plant. I've never used that one before because it's really unnoticeable and it doesn't really add anything. It's just uh, a tea. It's like a really tiny plant. I don't know if you know which one that is. Uh, maybe you've seen it before in game of, or used it even. Um, but this plant is really unnoticeable and you can place it uh, at the points where the pillars spawn and you can place it in between two pillars and it will actually get rid of two pillars and that's really awesome and I just use a couple of those after using the rocks and that really uh, got rid of all the pillars and I think it looks super cool now. Now I'm finishing off the exhibit with all of the rocks and plants. And the foliage that the oviraptors actually feed on since they're omnivores in the game and eat meat as well as plants, uh, I decided to put that foliage in since that looks a little bit more tropical right around the river to make it look a little bit more realistic like those plants would actually grow there. The meat feeder for the Gigantoraptors I actually put right in front of the viewing gallery so all of the guests can get an amazing view of the Gigantoraptors feeding on the meat. And if you're enjoying the video so far make sure to leave a like and if you're not subscribed yet subscribe to the channel. As you can see, I'm currently placing down all of these tiny Malta DLC plants that I've mentioned previously to get rid of all of the pillars from the monorails. This is really an awesome trick that I found out and I would recommend it to anyone who wants to build a monorail roof just like this in their own parks. On one of the sides of the roofed indoor exhibit, I, as I previously mentioned, I decided to build an outdoor exhibit. But on this other side that you're seeing right now, I decided to put a hill and on top of that some path uh, so the guests can actually view the exhibit from a little bit of a higher point. And as I've now said many times on the channel, it's always really great to build multiple viewing opportunities for your exhibits. What you can see right now here is that I actually decided to lower the whole outdoor exhibit from the Gigantoraptors uh, to make it a little bit more interesting again. But also what that allowed me to do is to incorporate a waterfall uh, going from the river inside of the indoor exhibit and then uh, leading into a lake in the outdoor section. If you don't know what I mean by waterfall, basically Crazy Cat Miri one day discovered the awesome idea to use the snow brush in the taiga and alpine biome as sort of uh, a substitute for a waterfall because it sort of looks like the falling water which can often appear pretty pretty white. 
This whole natural outdoor exhibit is not really designed with as much effort as uh, the indoor section of the exhibit. Uh, that's basically because I've built something like this many more times before and I didn't really think it was going to be too interesting for the time lapse for you to just see me build another uh, exhibit like I've done many times before and just decorating it. Uh, instead you're going to see the guest section later and you've already seen the indoor exhibit which I designed in a pretty different way with a lot of rocks and those little malta plants. I'm now using the Jurassic Park walls to keep this whole guest plaza and viewing area more separated from the rest of the park that you would theoretically put this in, but this is of course just the exhibit uh, built in this video and it's not connecting to any park. This whole plaza design of course was just a lot of terrain error like most of this exhibit, for example lowering the terrain in the back of the exhibit uh, like I previously did. And you know that's just what I do usually when building in this game and I don't want to cut that out uh, because that's just, you know, I'm showing that uh, not everything is built first try and that you always need some uh, trial and error to build something just like you wanted in this game. Now I've had the idea to sort of elongate uh, the monorail roof in one of the areas uh, basically in front of the viewing galleries. I did this to create sort of more of an interesting look and then also I uh, kept one of the layer of the pillars uh, in front of the viewing galleries to uh, create sort of like a wall to separate that area from the rest of the plaza. And I always think that looks pretty cool and I think this is probably my favorite feature in this entire exhibit. But now coming back to the Gigantoraptor, the main star of this whole exhibit of course and this whole speed build video. I personally really like the Gigantoraptor, I think it's of course super unique since it's uh, the second oviraptor in the game and a really incredible one at that uh, because the oviraptor that we currently have in the game uh, is really really small uh, it's from the Dominion movie we got that one with the uh, Malta DLC but now uh, the second oviraptor in the game is the Gigantoraptor which is incredibly huge like to think of that uh, the Gigant like if you compare that to something like the Oviraptor and most of those from the family are sort of similar in size, uh, maybe even a bit bigger, but uh, the Gigantoraptor is absolutely huge and it's kind of crazy to see that in the game and also uh, walks very interestingly, we're very chicken-like just like the Oviraptor we already have in game. Another detail I really like about this one is the iridescent feather feathers, I think that looks super super cool. And just the skins in general, I think, for this one are quite nice. Uh, they're nothing like super special, uh, not nothing like the uh, Uteraptor or the Pyroraptor, but I think they're really cool. So in general, I'm really excited about the addition of the Gigantoraptor in this DLC, and I'm looking forward to putting it in a lot of my parks in the future. But on an unrelated note, I've uh, gotten a lot of comments in general uh, asking me how I'm able to decorate my plaza so uh, amazingly and how good I'm at using the decorations in this game. And so I want to ask you guys uh, to comment down below if you want to see some kind of decoration masterclass video or something like that, showing you basically how I use the decorations, how you can combine them to achieve something really unique and how to decorate your uh, exhibits and parks to really make them uh, stand out more and to make them really unique and basically showing you how I use the decorations to heavily detail my parks. But anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you enjoyed how the exhibit turned out, as you can see it uh, right now in the cinematics. Uh, I'm really excited about the Oviraptor, I think it's a great creature in the game, and I also like how this exhibit turned out, again, uh, with, these little, with this little area in front of the viewing gal galleries uh, with the monorail roof, and I've never really done that in the game before, I think it looks super unique, and I hope you enjoyed too. Uh, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and everything. Uh, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.